Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Mario Nawfall X Spaces. You are here, you are here live, or you are listening to the recording. Either way, we appreciate it. You made it here using the reminder link, maybe. And we are excited to have you. You look at the title up top, and we're talking about the Metaverse Explained. What comes next with Blocktopia? Blocktopia is going to be our guests today. They're up here in a speaker spot. But uh, I am also up here. I'm the co-host. My name is Pulse Digital. I'm up here with David today, my favorite co-host to have up here next to me. David, how are are you doing sir oh pulse i'm doing great honestly since yesterday bro since roaring kitty came back i'm on cloud nine like there's no bringing me down i'm cloud 69 but what's even better than that we're about to hang out with blocktopia a bunch of awesome speakers up here on the panel and uh, you know j just get right into it i'm excited for this one me too, man. Like you said, it's been a good news week, a lot of uh, positive news, which has been nice to follow because the markets have been kind of boring the last couple of weeks. This has been a nice change of pace. But before we get into any of that, there are a few things we do for housekeeping. Uh, one, we see you requesting, uh, trying to get your hand up here. Obviously, we're going to get everybody in the speaker spots that we can. Uh, there's a lot more hands than we have spots, so please be patient as we're doing that. Two, if we can't get you in a spot, the comment section is your place to participate. We need that number to go up. Bottom right corner is where you leave your thoughts questions, concerns, if it's about what we're talking about, if you got a question for Blocktopia, if it's something uh, you guys are having conversations with yourselves, frankly, it's all, it's all fine. Thank it's all good so for the algorithm. Way. So let's get that number going up throughout the show. I'd like to see that triple digit easy uh, as we go. And then the share button is how you let people know that you're either here by putting it on your timeline, or specifically, if you know someone who's into the metaverse, who's into our topics today, who's going to want to talk about this, send them a DM. It's much easier to get someone to come to a space with a DM. It makes them feel special. Send them a DM. Last is emojis. I appreciate when you guys use the emojis. Emojis. It lets us know that you can hear, that you like what we're talking about, hearts, lights, and all that stuff. So uh, thanks for doing all that. And like David said, uh, the, the, GM, uh, the GME AMC meme stock return of Roaring Kitty has dominated the news. But the way the format works here is we want to talk at least for 60 seconds about uh, Blocktopia. So first, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what they're doing, and I want to check their microphone too. So Blocktopia, we're talking about metaverse. And what you need to think about with them is an education and entertainment hub. If you close your eyes, I'm going to paint a picture. It's a virtual reality skyscraper in your mind, whatever that looks like, with 21 different floors. And each floor is going to offer you a unique experience of either education and entertainment for crypto enthusiasts. And we're going to let them dive deeper into all of that as we get later into the spaces they're going to get a whole deep dive but between now and then we're going to go through a lot of news and stuff and we want blocktopia and all of our panelists to jump in by raising their hands if they've got something to say uh, we'll try and get to you in the order that we get there and we're going to keep the conversation moving david and i uh, that's our job uh, is to talk as little as possible after this point so blocktopia thank you for coming how are you doing welcome to spaces hi guys how are you doing are you okay yes and your mic is loud and clear you sound good over here thank you for pulling up today Perfect. That's great. You've got Paddy here, guys. So I'm the uh, co-founder and CMO of Blocktopia. Awesome. Thank you, Paddy, for swinging by. I hope you've got some spicy opinions on the news and stuff. And then uh, when we're ready to get into Blocktopia, you're going to take us to school uh, on what you're doing with the metaverse stuff. So you ready to dive in? Let's let's do it. Let's go, man. Uh, the David's right, and I'm going to hand it right to him because memes are David's specialty. He's got 69 degrees on the wall, and they're all in memeology. <laughs> So I want him to dive right into the, the Roaring Kitty thing, because he hasn't even probably slept but a few hours. Uh, now I know that's how he's been. So what's your 24 hours been like since this has been going on, David? Oh, Pulse, it, uh, it has been a roller coaster to say the least. Absolute least. And what just really distracted me from all of that was what, what you told us all to do. I'm closing my eyes. I'm imagining my 21-level tower in Blocktopia. Bro, hello, Roaring Kitty's there with me. You're there with me. We got Luke, we got Leon, all of you guys are there with me in Blocktopia, with Roy and Kitty, all the meme coins. I mean, bro, like, I, I want to go back there, but I can't, because we're all talking about some fun stuff with Blocktopia right now. So I know our panelists are going to have thoughts on this, because some of these people I haven't seen since this all happened, and I bet they haven't had an opportunity uh, to have that that uh, opinion on spaces. So who has been super busy chasing meme stocks? Uh, I saw a hilarious video earlier before I got in here from a previous SEC chairman who was very salty about the fact that a single uh, tweet of a person sitting forward in a chair could move markets to this degree. So so uh, what what do you all think? Raise a hand if you if you're shocked that the markets were so easy to move uh is this exactly what you'd expect from roaring kitty to come back is this in line with uh the culture what do you think patty first is this a big deal should we all be just as excited 
Do you know what, guys? I'm sorry, you're going to have to repeat the question because someone's literally just tried to call me as you were asking that question. But I heard you not to talking about Roaring Kitty. That is that is right. And I got a, another hand up. We were talking about Roaring Kitty and just whether or not this return means as much as people are making it out to. Basically, like, we're waking up 24 hours later and it's. I saw this on the news on three different stations. Regular news, by the way, like on the television. And they were talking about, you know, the GMC rally. And I saw the uh, former SEC chairman saying that he was just very upset, you know, that one uh, post on social media could have an impact like this. And I think the quote might have been something along the lines of, like, this isn't, this isn't investing. And that had people really upset. So, what do you think about the reaction to the return of, of Roaring Kitty? Well, look, this is this is crypto as we know it and love it, right? Because I think um, <clears throat> when I mean, you, you, the first thing that you said there was we woke up twenty four hours later and um, heard further news. I think when we we'll know we're really there where we, when we're not sleeping, right? It's twenty four seven and it's round the clock, and and all of these news stories are happening left, right, and centre. But this is. This is exactly the kind of stuff which creates excitement. You know, it's been, we've been really busy building um, over at Blocktopia for the last couple of years. And obviously the market from back end of last year started to move and it started to generate a lot more interest and a lot more excitement. But it can be a quiet place when that's not happening, when those topics aren't making the news and, and, and when, you know, key figures aren't speaking about them. I think... I think when we get to the stage where uh, your next door neighbor is asking you if they should be investing in crypto, we'll know we're there, right? Yep, and I think that, uh, and I'll hand the microphone over to that next raised hand, G GME and uh, GameStop and AMC and the meme stocks are a great flow into that. I think there's that big retail funnel that starts with stocks, but uh, I digress. Uh, I can't tell who that hand is up because I can't read the name. I apologize. Whose hand is that? It was Roop first. Roop, go ahead. Hey, hey. <laughs> morning, everybody. Um, yeah, this this is exciting. I think I, j to give a little context to this, I think um, you know B Bitcoin has been going up for I think a, a year and a half. Um, so technically, with you know air quotes, we've been in a bull market for for a year. And you know this is there's really been no new entrance to the market. I think you know if you, if you talk to anybody that's been here through the bear and, and from the last bull. Uh, there's been very few new entrants, and it's mostly the same people, you know, trading crypto with other people, um, and, and you know, more money coming off the sidelines. And I think this is the first time now that you know Roaring Kitty's back. This is the first time I've seen uh, really almost anybody talk about crypto uh, on the news. And you know, most of the time they're they're talking about meme stocks in the you know the U.S. stock market, uh, but then they always have this kind of dive into crypto. Um, so I think you know people people are kind of talk about this meme coin super cycle. And, you know, I think to decode that a little bit, because, you know, I think you'll hear that a million times this month. Um, what people mean by that is, you know, essentially some type of adoption of, uh, of meme coins by people that are not crypto native. And I think this is going to maybe, you know, kind of push that domino. Um, and, you know, I think the reason why people think are, you know, people are so bullish on meme coins is it's such a low barrier to entry. Um, and then, you know, if you look at uh, meme coins on base, um, you know, Solana, it's even a little harder to get to, but now there's going to be a lot of, you know, meme coins on base and Coinbase is going to make a, a big push to make them more accessible. Um, you can literally download an app on your phone and then buy a meme coin, you know, same day. Uh, and then, you know, it, I think if you take another step, maybe you can you know, get a Solana wallet and buy it on Photon or whatever it is. Um, so I think these are very, very low barriers to entry versus, you know, an entire Web3 game uh, or entire, you know, Web3 collecting site or NFTs, you know, any of these things that are a little bit further down the chain. Um, so I think this, you know, potentially I could see this as a bit of a catalyst uh, where we kind of jump into this uh, adoption cycle of meme coins where, you know, it's it's based on nothing, right? It's, it's a little bit vaporware, um, but it is exciting and it feels like you're part of something in its culture. Uh, which is, you know, that's something, and it, it, it does matter. I hey, love love that take. Me personally, I don't, I don't mind. I'll, I'll take a little vaporware in my meme coin cereal every now and then. Leon, over to you. I appreciate that, David. Everything Luke said was on point. The angle through which I am looking at what is happening right now with Roaring Kitty is really through that of narrative. What really moves this ecosystem, this space that we are in, is narrative. And what happens with Roaring Kitty signals the power of it, and most importantly, the importance of having one specific ingredient in the equation that is narrative. If you were to look at any story, 
any strong story that has ever been written, from religion all the way to your favorite Lord of the Rings movie. One thing each good story, each narrative we tell ourselves, has a common enemy. And with Roaring Kitty, with the whole GameStop phenomenon, the common enemy that people rallied around, that people understood, was the establishment. It was the clear target that people were going after. And this phenomenon showcases the importance of having that one very important, very clear uh, adversary that you can bring and build a community around. And it was, it was the fact that they were able to move markets by, by the billions, if you are to include the, the shorted amounts, proves to show just how important it is to wrap your product or your movement through a strong narrative that people understand. David, we talked about that yesterday. That was one of the layers to my onion that I <laughs> that we discussed yesterday. Uh, that the idea that it was not just that Roaring Kitty deserved all the credit, but that there was this social sentiment because we have to go back in time and remember that Occupy Wall Street was much more popular at the time. The anti-bank sentiment was stronger at the time. So I am 112% in agreement with that statement that the narrative matters uh, because crypto has been, this is such a great uh, segue you gave me here, crypto has felt a lot more PVP because like you said, we've been trading liquidity amongst each other and just trying to go from one pocket to another instead of PVE, which is all of us versus the damn banks. Uh, because that's frankly what usually gets it started is people are upset about money or inflation or the government or something like that. And then we all realize like, hey, I think we're all like kind of in the same place and instead of trading amongst ourselves we should be all trying to get people who are upset with the same system to come in uh, i would point to before i hand the microphone off the ads that coinbase and crypto.com have used successfully often painted that same picture uh trying to get people who don't have any crypto in as uh you know you're the kind of person who bucks the system uh you know the the infamous tom brady ad you know like you're the brave guy that goes to the moon be bold or whatever they just want to paint it as a way to get out so you're absolutely right that the narrative matters and, and that matters in every meme so the flow from GameStop into uh, Bitcoin is that it is still carrying that narrative right then that the meme the meme money flows this direction I think always uh, at least those are great points you guys are making David what do you think about the narrative isn't it so much about that like the common enemy narrative oh pulse not not only that I mean for one the common enemy narrative that's whatever that, that's one of the main things that can get everybody to rally behind something not only that, like, our entire industry is run by narratives. Like, if it's not one thing, it's the other. If someone's not back today, maybe they're back tomorrow. When they come back tomorrow, things go up 9, 10, 12, 69 figures. There's always some sort of story. There's always some sort of narrative. There has to be something for everybody to agree on, everybody to talk about, something that gets us all excited. That's the narrative for whatever topic, whatever token, whatever NFT, whatever space. There's always something behind it that really gets everybody going. I'm so glad it was this. Now, there was other stuff that I can talk about that was not quite uh, GameStop related, but it's adjacent. So let's touch on some of these and see if anybody throws a hand up. Uh, this drove, like we said, money into memes in general. Pepe went up a bunch, and a lot of people didn't expect that, uh, myself included. Uh, but frog coins went up, dog coins went up, SHIB experienced some uh, movement and stuff like that. And uh, even Andrew Tate got in with some stuff uh, talking about selling Bitcoin to buy uh, stocks, uh, So which is really weird. Uh, Zillion, you got your hand up. You go ahead. Yeah, and this is uh, this meme coin uh, uh, phenomena is uh, really a, a reminder to people uh, that tend to forget that owning a share, you're owning a residual claim, residual claim, a claim on the residual value of a stock, which is basically nothing. Because when a company gets liquidated, you're basically last in line to get anything of that company. So, in effect, even uh, uh, well, except pay, uh, dividend paying stocks, most of the stocks are basically meme coins. Obviously, they have metrics, they have earnings, but you as a holder of that claim, you're not getting anything once that, once that company, usually not getting anything, we're getting really fractional value uh, once that company get liquidated. So, I think this is a reminder, even in, in mainstream media, and today they were, this is a big subject, is, well, I mean, the, the idea behind meme stocks is not far away from the idea behind the stock itself, because uh, we get back to the narrative, people invest in narrative, 
uh, they try to reason themselves and try to find all type of reasonable uh, arguments why they're making XYZ investment. But at the end of the day, they're investing in narrative and they're investing in a pump. And um, and if we can, if if this demons, if what's happening today demonstrate this to the to the to the to the broader public, it also exposes the fact that um, obviously, as you know, trading today on GME is very tough because you get yeah, there's circuit breakers every every so so and so i mean today we had like up until now we had something like nine or ten circuit breakers uh so it exposes a bunch of things when it comes to the underlying infrastructure by which we trade stocks very good points coinbase was also out yesterday too and that's not necessarily related to the fact that they were selling gamestop stops but uh it's interesting interesting to note that they also had an outage is anybody was anybody affected by that or was anybody uh shocked that coinbase had an outage there were there were rumors uh whether they were true or not i cannot absolutely back this up at all so i'm saying again there were rumors that were used to pump pepe that the reason that coinbase was out was because they were having trouble setting up a listing uh for pepe and they i think that was used across social Social media uh, potentially to uh, I don't want I don't want to blow your guys' mind, but sometimes people will lie on the internet to get their bags to go up. I think that some people might have done that yesterday. I'll have to look into that further. Uh, but that's that Coinbase was out was also new. So Robinhood had like like he said like eight or nine outages, and then Coinbase was out yesterday. That's 2021 vibes right there for sure. I saw that post a couple of times that these things going down is actually maybe a good indicator because they need to get their stuff together. But I don't know how many people trust Robinhood from the last time or who was around to remember how that went or what it was like when Coin Coinbase you know has that like seven day lockout. I don't know how many people in the last bull run uh, put their money on Coinbase and then they couldn't trade for seven days because that isolation period when when that stuff hits the exchange. That's, that's all interesting to think about. And we're going to see all that again, hopefully, when people are running in. I'm going to make a hard swerve to a completely different subject. Uh, and then we're going to get about 10 minutes in and we're going to do a room reset and swerve more towards some metaverse stuff. But I, I have a couple other things pulled up that might be filed under news you might have missed, I think, because uh, all of the meme stuff that was going on. So I wonder if anyone knows that uh, the... Bitcoin movement at Mount Gox is actually still set to happen this year. And this is something Bitcoin people are watching very, very closely. And there is a uh, an update that was made on May 13th. And they're expected to distribute all of their holdings before October 31st of 2024. I don't know if anybody here is part of this, but there are actually countdowns going on. People are watching uh, because they're waiting to DCA, potentially thinking that the Mount Gox release is going to affect the prices that significantly. So I don't know if anyone here is into that. And the reason I bring it up is because it is kind of an obscure story in a week where we've had a lot of meme stuff this is kind of like a uh, meat on the bone thing to chew on but is anybody here waiting to possibly take advantage of this in october david what do you think oh man first well let me let me just tell you that i actually have firsthand experience with mount gox i don't like to ever talk about specific figures on here that, that's not something that i personally do on social media but i i did lose stuff on mount gox it sucked but why i was on there before Mt. Gox got into crypto, MTGOX stands for Magic the Gathering Online Exchange. That site used to be for people who played Magic the Gathering to trade cards with people who played the game all around the country, and we would mail them to each other in the mail. Like, bro, we, there was no intermediary back then. We didn't even use eBay. We put it in an envelope and mailed it to each other. That was one of the main reasons that I found out about Bitcoin. So even, even if I didn't lose anything on there, I would follow that like a hawk because, bro, that part of that code for the site is in my DNA. Like, I, I can close my eyes and I see Mt. Gox on my eyelids. I'm so glad I brought that up. I had no idea. I knew you were into magic after that last conversation we had about uh, trading card games, but I had no idea that it went that deep for you. You guys, I just opened a scar for him. He's going to have to go see the therapist an extra time this week. That's brutal. I'm so sorry. Uh, so he's following this because this is, it's 142,000 Bitcoin, you guys, that are eventually going to be distributed. And then on top of that, 143,000 Bitcoin cash and 69 billion yen are due to be paid out to creditors as a result of this, uh, this payout. And that is a huge amount. And people are watching it for all kinds of reasons. I didn't think that uh, it would go that that deep and hurtful <laughs> for my co-host. Is anybody else here actively paying attention to this? Or is this just one of those like large news stories that we're all just kind of like waiting to drop? I don't see any hands. I'm not, I'm not ashamed. Is anybody raising a hand, David? Am I missing hands? Because my visuals are messed up. All right, look, you know when raised the hand, but one of the rules that I have up here is if there's no hands up, I call on the first person who I saw throw up an emoji. So I'm, I'm, I want some thoughts from Loop. I mean, Loop, 
Is this going to mean anything? Are we going to see an MTGOX spin up on Pump.Fun? Like, what, what's going on? <laughs> uh, I, if it's news, we will see a meme coin about it for sure. Um, I think that it was something like there's there's a tenth. So the, the amount of songs that are spun up or that are, that are launched on Spotify a day is about 100,000. And there's about five to 10,000 new meme coins on Soul spun up every single day. So if there's new, if there's even, if someone sneezes, there's a meme coin made about it. So yeah, I think we'll definitely see meme coin made about it. Uh, as far as what will happen to the market, um, I don't know. Uh, like anytime a lot of Bitcoin moves um, or is refunded or, you know, I, you know every, I think everyone's watching the uh, FTX story as well. It's kind of related um, and, you know, people are going to potentially get their funds back there. Um, you know, a, a lot of times these things can be, you can, you can see a market dump and then a lot of, you know, it's kind of a sell the news event. And then sometimes you see, uh, you know, the market, the market fly. Um, so I, you know, I, I don't know enough about it uh, to really make a good, uh, a good, uh, a good estimate there. My thought process was that this conveniently lines up with what would be the U.S. election cycle anyway, and there's going to be a lot of instability around November, uh, uh, December, January, depending on what changes here. So the fact that the timeline is that it must be done, quote, before October 31st, I assume that means they have up until end of business October 31st. So that doesn't mean that it's going to be liquidated that day. It means it has to be distributed to the people who are, are due to be given their stuff. So it's, it's interesting to me to think about the possible implications of how many different things are going on that uh, month, that with 60 day period. So I think everybody's kind of holding their breath, which we talked about with the election. People are just kind of holding their breath financially. They're just waiting to see what's going on. So add this to the pile of reasons that people are going to be hyperventilating or, and or holding their breath. So for those of you that weren't following that story, now you know more about it. That's the reason you come to a Mario spaces. It's not just the news, you know, it's the news you should know sometimes. Uh, so thanks for going for that. And I am so sorry for David. <laughs> it's so brutal that I brought it up like that. Um, let's do a room reset since we've been here almost 30 minutes and we just ended one story and we'll roll into another uh, segment here. So for those of you that have been here the whole time, thank you for being here for the entire spaces. We appreciate that. Or if you're listening to the recording, for those of you that showed up at some point during this, welcome to another Mario and off all spaces. Look at the comment section. You guys, I told you we'd triple digit that, but we can do better. Let's keep that number going up. If there's anything yet that has still not been uh, discussed that you want to talk about, tag us down there, get to, uh, get a comment. We'll try and get to it down there. Shares and emojis are also still appreciated and make sure you're following everybody that cycles through the speaker spots. If there's, Great opinions coming through up here. I'm sure you're going to want to follow these guests so that you can uh, speak to them later. And also make sure you're following Blocktopia because they're the reason we are here today. The metaverse explained what comes next. Uh, now, I have some metaverse experience, but I'm not the one that's here to talk today. I'd like to hear from some of the panel. Uh, I love headsets. I love metaverse stuff. I love watching this stuff grow. So when I started off earlier describing the 21-level virtual skyscraper, that was pretty easy for me. But from all the listeners and the, the people in the... Uh, spots down there. Blocktopia, can you give like a brief elevator pitch, like not my 21 floors worth of elevator pitch about what you guys are working on so they know what uh, we're going to be getting into? Yeah, of course, of course. Um, so, so look, thanks for that introduction. I think it, I think the important distinction um, when we talk about what is a metaverse, what you guys do doing over at Blocktopia, etc., is we're not building a metaverse. No one's really building a metaverse. We're, we're building an app. It's a virtual world, which is, which is part of something bigger, which is commonly referred to as, as the metaverse. Um, and there's a bunch of other brands doing that as well. Some are in the crypto space. Others are a bit bigger and dominant, such as um, Meta, formerly Facebook. Um, and there's lots of different ways that these virtual worlds and these apps can be accessed, right? So you've touched on virtual reality. Um, we know Apple are going down that route. We, of course, know Meta do as well with the Oculus. But there's a whole other different bunch of ways that you can do that as well. So it could just be uh, through through Windows, through your Mac, or, or even on the phone. Um, and, and all of these apps, they have different things which are... Um, you know, they're unique and they uh, are important to different people. So I think at the moment, we're, we're really early in this space. So if you look at kind of the something like 600 million users of the metaverse in general at the moment, a lot of those are going to be attributed to the likes of Fortnite, right? So, so what's interesting about that is you've got a bunch of all of our kids 
going into a virtual space on a daily basis to socialize and to, to have fun and to be entertained. And that's an easy concept for a kid to understand it, but it, but it's not for, for adults, funnily enough. I'm in, I'm in my early forties. Um, when I speak to my friends and family about what I do day to day, you know, it can be, it can be a very confusing conversation for them. So that's, that's kind of a, a proof point that we're really early in this journey and, and we're making something which the, the youth that are sort of coming through today will understand and will be able to adopt and already are adopting on a daily basis. This is a way that they are socialising with each other. It's a way that they are interacting with each other already. They're already buying skins for their avatars. They're already um, consuming content within virtual apps and um and games and and all of that is what makes up the metaverse so blocktopia to kind of put it really simply what we're making is something which tries to bring all of that together for crypto so all of the good crypto news that you guys have just discussed exactly what we're doing here is just brought to life in a more immersive way there's lots of different content that can be consumed but you can also sort of stand next to a feed of crypto news coming through and stand there with a group of friends like you might do uh, you know in a in a bar or um, at work around sort of the water cooler or, or wherever else you might usually socialize with people the gym if you're more active whatever that might be you can do that in a virtual space you can access it from anywhere you can speak to people all over the world and you can consume and discuss and talk about the latest news um, and that's just one example of the sort of things that you can do. It extends, obviously, as we know, to, to things like live events, um, music, concerts, um, and lots of other things as well. And, and so that's what we're building at Blocktopia. The, the 21 levels are all different levels of interest um, because we, now we ultimately want to give people as many reasons as possible. So you have to Fortnite, you, Fortnite used the live events to great effect recently in the last six months to a year, I would say, to get people to understand that congregating on the island despite not playing, quote, the game could be a feature just to come to a concert and hang out with your friends in a virtual space. So I appreciate that you bring up Fortnite, quote, Fortnite as a metaverse, because I've actually had people fight me over that. And it's totally a metaverse in that sense that you go and hang out and do things and play. So is Roblox, which is something I've discussed. Roblox itself is like that, too. Too. There's so many sandbox style games that depending on how broad you're willing to describe metaverse uh, are very much like that. So those are those are great points for you to bring up that they're all uh, available like that. David, um, when you think about metaverse get togethers and stuff like I've done, I'll give David this example because I know David might not know this. I've done an X spaces in the metaverse before and like what uh, Patty was describing, we had our guests log in as avatars and, and come into a room that allowed us to broadcast onto a virtual screen so they could all sit and listen. Now, I couldn't interact with them, which is the bridge we have to cross, but can you envision doing like a theater full of people to come to your spaces in the in the coming future oh ab absolutely i mean to be honest look i would be lying if i say i haven't already thought about it i would be lying again if i didn't say i think about it every day like just being able to have something like that where not only can we do it in twitter spaces maybe we can connect this to whatever the new platform is whatever new nft is coming out everybody's gonna have their own thing and you get to put on your own show. You get to talk to the community in your way. I mean, I think it's only going to get bigger, badder, more exciting, and more fun. Bringing VR and all of this technology that's going to come out over the next few years into the mix. Pulse, we're getting closer to Ready Player One. Day in and day out. Which excites me and scares me. It scares me because I'm going to have to take a week off. Like, I, I might... I, I don't know what I'm going to do. But they, we're getting there. And we'll ask a couple of panel people here if you got some VR, AR experience, or even if you're just using your tablets and PCs, if you guys are into this stuff, like, uh, Fur, we haven't heard from you yet. I see a hand. Go ahead. Hi. Yeah, so I haven't chimed in yet because my expertise is art. Hey, what's uh, up, guys? Hi. So, oh, yeah, no, I was hearing you about the conversation on VR, Ready Player One, uh, Roblox, Fortnite, and uh, not only are they all... 100% metaverse. Hey, uh, hey, hey, Guzu, I think yeah. um, uh, Fair was talking. You might not be able to hear her. Um, sometimes that happens. Um, oh. Yeah, Fair was Fair was the uh, middle of the take. No worries. Yep, <laughs> I can't see her speaking either. <laughs> I thought maybe I was rugged, but uh, yeah, let yes. me just know when you guys hear me. Um, 
Yeah, you're good for going in. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> yeah, sorry. So, uh, meme coins are not my expertise, so I couldn't chime in before. But um, I am very much involved in the metaverse for art reasons. So, I have several galleries I curate constantly for the community. And uh, also, like, I have a Quest 2, which I have to say I bought to use uh, to visit galleries. But I got completely obsessed with Beat Saber now. <laughs> So I love, I absolutely love, um, you know, the game part of the metaverse. I think it's really cool. And I have to say, like, I have a son. So when you guys talk about Roblox and all of that, I can relate to that as well. Because I think, you know, like when we have a global community, like I am from Brazil, I live in the States, my friends are all over the world. So I love the idea that I can actually get together with people virtually and continue having a conversation. I use a lot of spatial, for instance, and I love how you can actually add a video on top of your avatar. So I've done gallery talks with that. So you can actually talk to the artists and they can talk about their art and you can relate as if you are in a real reception. So I think it is a great way that it's evolving and making people come together, um, you know, in a more accessible way. So I'm a, an absolute fan of the metaverse uh, gathering. So, yeah, that's uh, what I wanted to share. No, uh, love, love that. Thanks for sharing, Leon. Over to you. Appreciate that, David. By the way, for I was unable to hear uh, the, the take you had, but but must have been good. Uh, really, the point that I wanted to make was was regarding the introduction of this point, which was the use cases of metaverse and the technologies adjacent to that. I was reading this weekend, uh, read, write, own, a new book, incredible read, and one thing he was talking about was. Every new technology often follows a specific curve. At the beginning, we see the use of the technology being used to amplify things that we already do. For example, I believe it was David, you were mentioning how you had a, a, a Twitter spaces on, uh, on, um, on, in the metaverse once. That, for example, is an augmentation of something that we already do. Team meetings, team gatherings, all that. However, what is most exciting about technologies like the metaverse are new, unique, and native use cases that we have yet to see about what that would look like. And personally, I think that this is where real innovation is going to come in. Seeing new ways to use that specific technology to achieve new experiences and new utilities that have yet to be seen outside. And I do think we are still very early. We are seeing players like the Robloxes, like the Fortnite, trying to innovate on that, trying to push the boundary, and obviously seeing new, new startups like Blocktopia coming in, also trying to, to push the narrative. Uh, this is what I would say I'd be most excited about for uh, technologies like the metaverse. Oh, absolutely love that response, Leon. I think we lost Pulse there for a second. While we're getting him up here, just wanted to take a second to make sure all of the listeners, if you're having a good time, drop a comment in that bottom right. We're at 187, probably higher because Twitter glitches all the time. We passed my record. Every time I like to make sure we get at least 169, as long as we go past that, I am happy and satisfied. Want to get to some of these other hands, let everybody know. The last 15, 20 minutes of the space, we are going to dive deep into it with Blocktopia. Deep like deep end, like deep blue sea in the ocean. All 21 floors and hear everything that these guys are doing. It's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. Blocktopia, you had your hand up. Over to you. <laughs> Yeah, I put it back down because uh, you said you're going to give me a deep dive at the end, but I just thought there was, a, there was an interesting comment there. Um, I think it was Leon that was speaking. So, you know, a lot of this, the, a lot of this, the stuff that we've discussed so far, in general terms, we, we were talking about ourselves among, amongst a bunch of other people in 2021. And the point, the point's correct in the, you know, what else can the metaverse do? What can it, what can it offer? Um, that, that's new that we haven't even thought about yet, and that's what that that, that is what makes my job really exciting. Um, I, w I would also argue, and you know, we kind of seen this ourselves. I couldn't hear fair earlier. My connection's a bit in and out. I don't really know who's talking a lot of the time, and what we do at Botopia is is really different as a live event. We've got a live event actually that Mario's going to be in on Friday. Um, and uh, you can tell when people are talking, you, you're stood in front of people, your avatar, there's an interaction there, which is a lot more like when something happens like that in real life. So there are all, there's also 
opportunities, just what I wanted to say, to, to enhance kind of software that's out there, which is working well, which is allowing people to do opportunities like this, but kind of make it better as well. I absolutely love that take. Uh, could definitely appreciate the contribution. Gizu, and, and also, guys, look, the alpha is, if you cannot hear the other speakers, you need to have, like, six different computers running in the background. Like, we, we like to play hot potato with the speakers and just, like, that. that's part of the fun and the excitement. If you don't like it, I, I don't know what to tell you. But, Gizu, over to you. <laughs> yeah, 100%. I heard the last part, and then I turned on the computer, and I could hear the catch the last piece of first talk but uh yeah i was gonna piggyback off of venos i was looking over blocktopia since you shattered it out uh, like that i like the energy so you know makes you want to look into projects and i'm loving the interoperability of it all and um it connects it to uh, to something that i forgot i was speaking before this but and i think it was before leon too uh but this concept that you know there is all these companies that are already becoming metaverses and although the metaverse is taking the place of some sort of culture, a cultural element, a way of behaving as players uh, and investors rather than just users of what's being created. Um, and uh, also one thing, and uh, this is something that I'm invested in, but I'm going to bring it up because it makes the point. But uh, you guys mentioned Fortnite, Roblox, and these are effectively they're becoming metaverses and this interoperability of pieces uh, being able to go from one place to the other and possibly even inter interact with artificial intelligence which is going to need uh, to be there in order for things to be verified because the same pfp could be used everywhere but then who's the original one so blockchain and artificial intelligence will not only uh, allow for interactions that are smoother and for the game to reproduce and enhance and increase itself expand itself um, but if anybody has ever heard of the future verse um, there there is something there there they got something coming that's called the visit open and I can tag this thing up here and then remove it after I'm done talking but um, it has all the it's uh, they have a partnership with ready player one and then there's some hints of the hunt which seems to be connected to the actual accounts from Fortnite and uh, Roblox themselves and Ready Player One because they're connected to the writers and if you follow the rabbit hole there is a couple of links uh, up where I sent it and you know uh, I'm not trying to influence or play I am invested as I said uh, but uh, making the point uh, people are getting really really close and not only are they getting close as some sort of proprietary technology piece but it's almost like as the bar gets higher, the pie increases and us as investors and players are not looking at investing as a, you know, uh, if I win, you have to lose. Uh, there is this increase across technology of multiple pieces uh, interacting with each other. Um, and I think that, you know, it captures what metaverse means and it's getting increasingly more interesting for those that can see there was a quote that all said, right well hold uh, on hold on uh, don't mean to cut you off there but we're getting to that part of the show we just want to give all the speakers one one last round of questions we're going to do something rapid fire really quick get 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 some quick thoughts from everybody but look you said ready player one i'm completely sold any company that's doing that if you're doing a free NFT and I got a Ready Player One suit and also an entire city where they filmed Ready Player One, I want all of that. That will make me so bullish. I am looking for the one company who is going to deliver on that. Still looking confident that I may find it one day. But look, guys, Metaverse. I mean, that, that there's so much happening, so much that has already happened. It was a meta. It might be another one in the future. I want to hear some last thoughts from everybody. What is one thing that this entire experience, virtual worlds, digital worlds, metaverse, what do you think is going to be the most important part of that moving forward? Um, let me just pick, guys. It, it, it's eeny, meeny, miny, mo time. Leon, give us some thoughts. All right, Leon, we'll get right back to you. It's okay. Loop, you threw up the emoji. It's your turn. Go for it. <laughs> um it's a good question i i mean i think the the future of metaverse like to me i think um the the, the tough thing is i i don't think that it's going to be easy to just visualize like what this is going to look like in in 10 years um and you know i i am somebody that has not fully bought into 
uh, the Ready Player One uh, visual. Um, but you know, I think the technology is changing so fast, and and AI is changing so fast that um, we're getting to a point where like Unreal Engine literally looks like real life. So you know, I do think that that's a possibility. Um, I think that for the next three to four years, um, everything is going to be about unique experiences and culture. Um, so if you can have, you know, being in Web three is a very unique experience, um, and it can you know bond you with people way more deeply uh, than than you know other just traditional experiences. So I think you know companies that focus on that are are going to win out. Oh, I was going to say go for it, Pulse. But all right, guys, we're getting about that time. I think we got about two, three minutes. Blocktopia, I'm going to send it to you in a second. But first, Leon, I think we got you back. I'm back, David. Yes, thank you. I appreciate that. Really, what I'm most excited about with the metaverse, I would say the real innovation happens with the augmentation of senses. What does that mean? I think education is going to be big because all of a sudden you have the, the metaverse, AR, VRs. These create greater immersive experiences which allow us to hit more senses. And the more senses you can activate, the faster the learning curve is going to become. So all of a sudden, imagine trying to solve a mathematical equation. Instead of just using your eyes, imagine if you could use all your senses, you could play around with the numbers in the metaverse. I believe education is going to be one of the big pillars of that. Oh man, I could not agree more. And I, I was reading over some of the things that Blocktopia is doing. Just education on the blockchain. Like, I don't know how it works with all this censor censorships and lines and signals, but to me, you put it on chain and it is there for everybody. I don't make the rules. I just follow them. Look, Tokir and Fur, I'm sorry. We got one, we got time for one last remark. We're going to go over to Whalecoin FUD. We would love to have both of you back in the future. Whalecoin FUD, what's going on? What's up, man? Yeah, I spent half an, half an hour trying to get on here. But yeah, Metaverse, I mean, the definition of Metaverse is different depending on who you're asking. Like, I've been in the Metaverse since RuneScape 15, 20 years ago. And I'm just going to answer your question. Like, I think the most important thing within the Metaverse is that we can secure digital assets. So if you've been playing, like, games uh, and you've been selling items, selling accounts and such, um, you're, doing it in, you're doing it in a decentralized way that is secure and you have no middlemen that can um, destroy these digital assets and, and the trade between them. So absolutely love that. And listen, everybody, we've got a ton of big brain speakers still up here. We're about to jump into it with Blocktopia. Are they, these comments, oh my God, everybody, you must be having a good time because we're almost at 269 right now. Retweet the space. Let everybody know that Blocktopia is about to give us some life changing alpha again i don't make the rules i just repeat them so that you all know how things work blocktopia it is your time we're at that part of the show tell us about you and how cool you are what a build up i love it i absolutely love that uh, yeah look i i totally agree with some of the comments that, that have just been made there education is absolutely massive for the metaverse i think joe public doesn't fully understand what it is and why they need it yet right so we have to show them but it, it goes beyond just explaining it and even showing them what a virtual space is. It's then about the granular detail of, well, why is it important to them? How can blockchain uh, technology help? Uh, how can the information that we're providing benefit their lives, right? And we really, really focused on crypto. We're focused on being able to give trusted sources of things like trading strategies, unique content. Um, but we've also, you know, we've got, partnerships with, with UCL, with Stanford, etc. So there's blockchain university courses that are going to be within Blocktopia as well. Um, the event that we've got on Friday, uh, the 17th of May, of, of May we're, we're, we're launching an event. Mayo is going to be our presenter. We've got Coin Bureau coming in. So great source of, of education. You know, guys are a person who they don't take any tokens for anything um, that they push. They, they very much are... Um, agnostic to kind of what they believe in and, and that's a sort of great endorsement for us um, one inch are coming in as well and Dex Tools and they can offer some really uh, important tools as well and information for people so so you know we're trying to bring a really important hub of information and education together for the crypto space um, but you know, it's important to remember just because I, you know, I'm English I love, I love football or soccer so 
Um, just because I, I love crypto, I also want to hear the news and, and be interested. You know, I've got other interests. I want to go to other spaces, and we're going to pull all of that in as well. We're going to do things like fashion. Ross and I were over in Paris recently speaking to Louis Vuitton. We've got another uh, collaboration with a company called Metacard that's a payment solution business. They have an agreement with MasterCard. They're really interested in what we're doing. You know, it, it, but all of these brands, they don't necessarily understand how this is important for them yet. And so we're, we're pulling it all together now. Like, there was a lot of talk in 2021. We're now in 2024 and we've, we've been working really hard. And one of the things we're going to be doing on the 17th of May, I think it's a world first. You're going to be able to come along with your MetaMask wallet, hook it up within Boxopia and stake. So we're, we're putting a really uh, cool deal together, 100% APY for people to come and stake block tokens and, and stake. And they can also use um, a, a token swap so they can swap between USDT and, and, and block as well. So, you know, all of a sudden there's some really tangible use cases that we're going to have in there. So we're really excited about that. There's going to be live stage presentations, ATMs with blockchain integration, um, connecting wallet, RSS feeds, pulling in lots of content, live stores, YouTube videos, AI bots, networked audio chat so that we can do things like this but with avatars so you can, that can move about that you can customize that you can be whoever you want to be that could be you in, in in a reflection of you in real life or something completely different text chat uh, advertising terms voting ask a question emotes timely systems holograms all that cool stuff's coming together in blacktopia and we're, 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 we're going to showcase that that to the world on friday Oh, man, absolutely love it. I, I, I was reading over a few things from you guys earlier. One, one of the main parts that stuck out to me, an educational and entertainment hub. Blocktopia is envisioned as a virtual reality skyscraper with 21 levels. Like, I'm, I'm, I want to hear a little bit more about that. I hear this, and I'm like, oh, my God, there's going to be cool stuff in here, 21 different things I get to learn about. I'm already trying to plug and play everything in my brain. Like, I... Tell, tell me a little bit more about that, Blocktopia. Yeah, we've built nine so far. So um, we built a welcome lobby. Uh, and a lot of this hasn't been shown by shown to the public, uh, by the way. So we built a welcome lobby. We've then got our main kind of crypto hub and crypto space. We've got a sports space. Um, and they're all based around topics of interest. So food, travel, cars, fashion, technology, gaming. Um, we have had lots of testers in the gaming space, testing some games that we've got in there. We're going to hook all of this stuff up to uh, the blockchain. And it's just going to become a world where there's engaging things to do. There's things that you, there's content that you consume, can consume, and you can socialize with friends. You can make sure you're in the same instance with them. There's going to be a friend system, which we're kind of in the final throes of testing. So you can always make sure that you're in the same space as, you, as your friends and you can hang out. And that could be you're in uh, England or you're in Australia or you're in Nigeria. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. As long as you've got a, a broadband connection and a device, at the moment, we've got um, Windows and Mac apps, but we're also um, very soon going to be making this accessible for uh, for iOS and for Android as well. And once we've got that, we've kind of pivoted recently. We were working towards VR initially, but it's limiting in terms of the barrier to entry at the moment. We know that'll get better, so we're kind of going for the mass access devices and, and will be VR compatible as well. So we're kind of going at it from all our, our angles. We want as many people as possible to get into our space. We can get tens of thousands of people into Blocktopia all hanging out together concurrently. And so, you know, we're excited to show the world. Oh, man, I absolutely love that. The, o the only thing, look, 21 is a nice round number. Everybody, if, if you don't like 21, you need to watch a few movies. But my, my favorite number, look, but, uh, I, I, I want 69 floors, guys. Are you going to limit me to 21, or can I get 69? So the original reason we, we went to 21 is is because of Bitcoin, right? So it's a little nod towards that, um, and the fact that there'll only ever be 21 million Bitcoin. Uh, that's not to say we couldn't do more in the future. Um, we, we're building beyond the kind of nine that I've talked about. We're building private spaces. We're building apartment spaces that... Um, people can purchase through NFTs, um, and that's going to be sort of the the second phase of, of Blocktopia once we've got the first part all live and open twenty four seven for people to visit. Oh, can man. I can I ask a question? 
Yeah, yeah, go for it, Wailcoin guys. Uh, what games are, are you guys uh, inspired by? Is it like Invu and um, uh, what's it called again? The open world. Um, yeah, it's like Second type life. of Invu. Yeah, Second Life. Second Life. Um, I don't think we're inspired necessarily by games. We've got like right. So we're building a we're building an app in a gaming engine, right? So we're building it in Unity. And most of our devs have worked on games in the past. We're very careful to sort of not call Blocktopia a game or necessarily take too much inspiration from just games. You can take inspiration from all sorts of things, right? Going back to Snow Crash and uh, Ready Player One has been talked about a lot and just ultimately going to real life events and, and, and what people are doing, what how they're consuming content, how they're... Uh, talking to people, what experiential events they're interested in. And I think it's a combination of all of those things. Then pulling in crypto, NFT, and blockchain technology, and sort of layering that on top and, and making sure that's got a use within Blocktopia and, and is important as well. And, and honestly, we've just we've, we've not necessarily looked at how other people are, are doing that. We've just had this sort of vision that we've wanted to bring together ourselves. We stayed really true to the original roadmap that we created a, a couple of years ago. We pivoted here and there. But we've, we've stayed really true to that idea because ultimately when we launched Block in October 2021, we had the best launch of any crypto token um, based on ROI in that year. So we know that people want what we're about to offer and we're really excited to finally be able to bring that to the world. No, oh, man, I absolutely love that. So, something else I'd like to know from all of the all of the projects, any company out here that I'm personally interested, I mean, partnerships, companies that you're working with, your backers, tell us a little bit about who you guys have in your corner. Yeah, so I've, I've already mentioned this first event. Um, we've got live uh, presentation with Coin Bureau, One Inch, Dex Tools. Um, the kind of uh, the, the original trailer, the premise of Blocktopia was bringing together lots of crypto related partners right so we um we have and it's almost like a, a, a shopping mall area whereby there's lots of different virtual stores but instead of just retail purposes you can go into them and you can learn more about um the blockchain for example if it's the polygon store so we've got partners such as polygon qcoin multiverse x engine binance nft solana Coin Telegraph, Coin Market Cap, and so the list goes on. I think real world brands. We've spoken to a huge, huge amount. I, I mentioned Louis Vuitton. Um, I mentioned our own ongoing conversations with Mastercard. There's there's massive interest, but it's kind of yeah, it, it follows a line similar to a to a crypto token, right? Like. There was a huge amount of interest in 2021 and then that interest slowly sort of dies away because it's not the hot topic anymore. Meta aren't talking about it. There's headlines about, you know, uh, Meta's performance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then there's a resurgence again and everyone starts talking about it. And, it, and that can follow the market as well. So that's been a really interesting journey to be on. Real world brands will adopt the metaverse. There's absolutely no doubt about that they already obviously are starting to there's lots of events um, and, and we can point fingers at, at those and they may have been successful they may not have been for those brands but but people are, are heavily invested you know we know that from our meeting with Louis Vuitton they're heavily invested in this idea and this concept of, of being involved in in the virtual world moving forward so it's kind of a matter of um of when and we, we have to be sort of patient in some respects, but the crypto brands and partners we have on board, they're jumping at the bit, they're ready to go now, and luckily so are we. Makes me think of things like metaverse retail, and that's exactly why other, other brands, business to business, will be a big deal. And in a, an environment where you could potentially be leasing space in a virtual skyscraper, the storefronts, the, the brands that would want to be seen in a place like that, it's absolutely obvious who is going to want to be there. It's going to be, it makes me think of the way the uh, galleries in Caesar's Palace or in any Vegas casino work. It's like the top tier brands all, like they just have to have a storefront there, even if they didn't want to, because they can't let their competitors have a brand there. It makes so much sense. Um, 
as we wrap up, we can usually do about an hour on these spaces. The last question that I like to ask when we have uh, our guest up here, this would be for Patty, and uh, it's a broad question. So there's a large uh, a number of people here that came for the first time, and they're hearing about Blocktopia. So we're going to be speaking to them, but there's also the people that have been supporting you and that are very excited to hear you speak here. So these are people that already knew about you that are supporting you for being here. What would you say as our final thought uh, and parting thought about Blocktopia before we leave the spaces today to all those people? I think, I mean, I can see a few names of, of people that, um, that come to a lot of my talks and, and have been hugely supportive all the way through this journey. And, and so my first thought there was just to say thank you for that support. It's been a, a, a a wild ride over over the last sort of two and a half years. Um, we're 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 about to sort of deliver on the MVP of, of what we always wanted to deliver. So we thank people for their patience, and we hope that it kind of meets the expectation that we set. We think it's in line with that trailer with with the expectation that we set um, a couple of years ago. And we, we just can't wait for people to get in. You know, we've got analytics absolutely everywhere. We know what's really important. We had some gaming tests this weekend with just a couple of hundred people. And the engagement was crazy. I think over nine and a half thousand games were played by like a handful of people. Um, and the dwell time's like well over an hour. So, you know, you kind of compare it. Who's going onto a website for an hour? It, does, it, it just doesn't necessarily happen. Like this is a bit different because there's a reason for us to talk and there's a reason for us to be here. But we're, we're really interested in engagement, bringing people in, dwell time, making sure that they've got reasons to come and visit Blocktopia and we can't wait for them to check it out. <coughs> well said, man. And start, starting with gratitude is never a bad idea. Shout out to all the early Blocktopia supporters uh, who came to the spaces and who have been supporting them the whole way because that's how we all got here today. Look at us. We had a great spaces thanks to all those people. Uh, what I would say as we're wrapping up is I want to say thank you to all the listeners that came in, whether you made it here early with a reminder or made it through the whole recording. Either way, very cool. And also look at the comments. Uh, I told you that number would go way up. I appreciate you guys taking the time to write your stuff down there. Now, you need to be following all the people that were speakers in this spaces. I know they've come up and we, we ran through a couple people. So hopefully you're following them because the people we invite are often the best speakers on spaces. And if we're not doing something, they are, and that's where you should be. So thank you to everyone that came up. I see all the people that were here and a couple people that dropped out. Appreciate you guys for coming up and, and providing your input on everything with Blocktopia. And I appreciate David for being my co-host, man. I'm lucky every day, man. Thank you for doing the spaces. Hey, absolutely, Pulse. I mean, it's always a good time doing spaces with you up here, but even better today because of Blocktopia. I'm personally interested in that. Love when you combine education and the blockchain. I mean, that, that just feels like magic in the making. I wanted to take a second. Thank all the listeners for coming out today. Everybody who supported, who dropped a comment in the bottom right. I'm not looking, but I'm assuming we got to 269, so thanks everybody for that. Make sure you are following all of the speakers up here, especially Blocktopia. I mean, they've got a lot of cool things coming, even bigger things coming down the line. 21 floors, possibly 69 down the line. I mean, what what is there not to love? And, you know, everybody, back back to you, Paul. I'm, I'm excited about Blocktopia. Well, and what I would say on the way out the door, like I always do, is if you are ever wondering when the next Best Spaces is going to be, you are already following Mario. Anytime you turn on the X app and look at the top, the number one space is running is likely a Mario or a Roundtable Spaces. So if you want to catch Mario, if you want to catch me, Pulse Digital, if you want to catch David or any of our other great co-hosts that we work with all the time, you've got to be following Mario and following us, and we'll catch you on the next Mario Nawfall X Spaces. Guys, we appreciate your attendance, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>